Hello everyone, in this video we will create one integration to get the supplier details using REST API. Now for this integration we will use two REST connections and one FTP connection. The REST trigger connection and FTP connection is already there. You can refer my earlier videos for the setup of these connections. You can find those videos in YC playlist that you will find in the description. Now I will create the REST invoke connection that will be used to get us the supplier details. So I'll click on the create option and search for REST. Now I'll choose REST. I'll provide the name as REST002 and I'll choose the role as invoke. Now I'll click on the create button. Now for the connection type, we'll choose REST API based URL. And in the connection URL, we have to provide the ERP URL as we'll use this REST API to get the supplier data from ERP. So I have provided the ERP URL. Now I'll go down and now we have to provide the ERP username and password. Now test and save the connection. Now I'll go to integrations and create the integration. I'll provide the name as INTG017 as it is our 17th integration and I'll click on the create option. Now first of all, I'll choose the REST trigger connection which is REST001. Here I'll provide the name as request continue for the endpoint URI I'll provide slash I'll choose the action as post I'll not configure any request or response payload for now I'll just continue and finish I'll make it horizontal now you have to search for the REST API endpoint to get all the suppliers so for that I'll search with REST API for Oracle procurement I'll go down and open the first link then I'll choose the option go to latest release and here you will find all the REST API for Oracle Fusion cloud procurement. I'll go down and here you can see suppliers. I'll expand it. Under supplier you can find all the REST API for the suppliers for different purposes. Now in this video we'll need the REST API to get all the suppliers. So I'll click on get all suppliers and you can see this is the endpoint to get all the suppliers from Oracle ERP. So I'll copy this endpoint and go to YC. Now we have to use the ERP REST API invoke connection. So for that, I will click on the plus icon and search for REST. You can see REST002. This is the connection that we just created. Now I'll select it. And here I'll provide the name as get suppliers from ERP. Now in the endpoint relative resource URI, we have to provide this endpoint that we just copied so i'll paste it here and the action will be get which is already selected now to get the supplier data in the response payload we need to check this checkbox of configure the endpoint to receive the response so i'll check it and continue now i'll go down and now here we have to configure the response so i'll click on the inline option and here we have to mention the attributes in json format for which we want to get the data now if you go to that rest api page and go down here you can find the example of response body now items is an array attribute because we are getting multiple suppliers here and that is why item will be repeated multiple times you can see the starting square bracket here and if you go down you can find the closing square bracket at the end of the response now first of all i will copy the items with the square bracket and paste it here now i'll provide the ending square bracket and the curly braces for attribute items then within this square bracket we have to provide all our supplier attributes for which we will require the data you can see within the square bracket we have used the curly braces and provided all our supplier attributes which are supplier id supplier party id supplier number then supplier name business relationship status taxpayer country and taxpayer id so these are the attributes for which we want the data so you can add more attributes here or you can remove the attributes that you do not want now i'll continue continue and finish now whatever the data that we are getting in the response we want to write those data in one csv file and place that csv file into a sftp location so for that i'll click on this plus and search for FTP connection, which is FTP001. 
So I'll provide the name as write file to SFTP and I'll continue. Continue. Now here I will select the operation as write file. Output directory I will provide slash. File name petal I will provide star. We will provide the directory and file name in the mapping. Now I will continue. Now here we have to provide the structure of the CSV file where we want to write the data. So I will continue. So here we have to upload the file format. So for that we have to create the file format first. Then we will upload it here. So I will go to notepad. Now here I will create one CSV file that contains all the columns that we are getting in the response. So you can see these are all the columns that we are getting in the response. Now I'll create a CSV file. So I'll press Ctrl S to save the file. In the save as type, I'll choose all types and provide the file name as supplier output.csv. Now click on save. Now I'll upload this file. In the record name, I'll provide W. In the record set, I'll provide WS. Then I'll go down and I'll make all the columns as optional. Then first column as mandatory. Now continue. Finish. Now I'll go to the map of write file to SFTP. Now from the sources, I'll expand get suppliers from ERP response. And under the response wrapper, I can see the items, which is a repeating element. Because in the response, we have used this as an array. And under items, I can see all the supplier attributes. Now from the target, I'll expand WS. And under W, I can see all our supplier columns for our write file. Now first of all, I'll map the repeating element, which is items to W. Then I'll map all the supplier attributes, like supplier ID, supplier party ID, supplier number, then supplier, which is supplier name. You can see I have mapped all the supplier attributes. Now we also provide the SFTP file path where we want to write the file with the file name. So for that, I will expand this outbound file header type. And here we have to provide the file name and directory. But before that, I will go to the race trigger action. And in the request payload, I will provide the file path and file name. So I will go back and edit the race trigger action. And I will check the checkbox of request payload. Continue. And I will go to the inline. And here I will provide the file path and file name. You can see I have provided the two attributes which are file path and file name. And I will provide the values of these two attributes when we'll trigger the integration. Now continue, continue, finish. Now again go to the map of write file to SFTP. Expand the outbound FTP header type. And from the request wrapper, map the file path with directory and file name with file name. Now one more thing we missed out and that is we have to add the header in our output file. So for that I will expand WS and I will click on the W and I will select the delete target node. So now you can see all the mappings are deleted now. Now in this node first of all we will add the header then I will create another node by using the repeat node option and in that I will map all the data attributes. So I will expand W. And now for all the columns, I'll provide the name of that column. Like I'll click on the supplier ID and choose create target node. Then I'll provide supplier ID. Similarly for supplier party ID, I'll write supplier party ID. And I'll do this for all the columns to create the header. Now I have provided column names for all the fields for the header. Now I'll click on W and click on repeat node. So you can see this is the first node and I'll go down and one more node is created which we'll use for the data mapping. So from the sources I'll expand the get supplier from ERP response and I'll create the mapping like we already did earlier. Now I'll validate. Now you have to provide one primary business identifier that I'll provide as file name. Now save. Now I'll activate and run this integration. Now run this integration. Go to the body. And here we have to provide the file path and file name. So this is the output SFTP location where I want to write the file. So I'll copy this and paste it here. And for the file name, I'll write 
supplier underscore output dot csp now i'll run so you can see processing completed successfully now expand the race tax and get suppliers from erp and view the message process payload now you can see these are the suppliers that we are getting using the rest api so this is the first supplier then if i go down we can see more suppliers are there i'll go to sftp and refresh now this is our output file now i'll download this first now i'll open this now you can see we are getting the data correctly with all the columns and if you go down you can see we are getting only 26 rows including the header so that means we are getting the data of 25 suppliers only but in erp there are a lot of suppliers so why we are getting only 25 suppliers that we'll see now to find the reason we'll go to the rest api page and i'll go down and here under query parameters you can see one parameter which is limit and this is saying this parameter restricts the number of resources returned inside the source collection that means the rest api set a limit for the records fetched by it and the count is 25 now if we want to fetch more records then we have to use this parameter as query parameter in our integration and set our own value so for that i will go to oic and deactivate the integration and edit it now i will edit the rest action and go down now to add any query parameter we have to check this checkbox of add and review parameter for this endpoint now continue so here we have to specify our query parameters so i'll click on the add option and i'll check this checkbox now here i have to provide the query parameter and the name of the parameter is limit and the data type is integer now i'll continue continue and finish now i'll go to the map of this rest action and now i'll expand the query parameters and in the limit i'll click on the create target node and here we can provide the value of how many records we want so i'll provide 1000 that means it will fetch 1000 suppliers through the rest api i'll save it now i'll activate and rerun the integration i'll rerun the integration with the same file path and file name i'll click on the run option now i'll go to sftp and i will download the output file now i'll open the file so now you can see 286 records are there including the header that means we are getting 285 suppliers and in our erp 285 suppliers are present so that means we are getting all the suppliers from erp and if we have less than equal to thousand suppliers then also we will get all the suppliers as we have put the limit as thousand now i'll again go to the rest api page and now we want to filter the suppliers by adding some conditions similar to the where condition that we add in the sql query so for that i'll go down and now we have to use the query parameter q so i'll go to yc again i'll deactivate and edit the integration i'll edit the rest action again continue now i will add one more query parameter now here i will provide the query parameter q and i'll select the data type as string now i'll continue and finish now i'll go to the map and i'll expand the query parameter now i'll select q and create target node now for the condition i'll go to the rest api page again and under the q we have to check the attributes that we can use for the conditions like these are the attributes that can be used for the condition so the first condition i'll use business relationship and the value i'll provide as spent authorized now i'll put one more condition and to provide multiple conditions you have to put semicolon between two conditions so i'll put semicolon and go to the rest api page and the second condition i'll use tax organization type equal to corporation now the entire string i'll put within double quotation now i'll save this validate now i'll save the integration and i'll activate and rerun the integration so i'll run it again it is completed successfully i'll go to the sftp now i'll download the output file i'll open it and now if i go down you can see now we are getting 210 suppliers 
that means some suppliers are removed from our output file for which the conditions are not satisfied so this is how we can add the conditions using the query parameter to filter the records when you are getting the data through rest api so this is it for this video if you like this video please hit the like button share this video within your circle if you have any doubts or any suggestions put that in the comment section and do subscribe our channel thank you